Right, eh, Talio there, champs, and you're with me at the beach on location for my short little break. And let's talk. Should you buy an Intel based Mac or should you wait for the ARM version? So instead of just showing you a bunch of random Mac footage, hey, let's have some beach scenery. Why not? So I've watched many videos and read many articles about whether you should wait for the ARM based Macs or whether you should get an Intel Mac. And, you know, there's been a lot of opinion varying from don't buy an Intel Mac because it's a dead platform and stuff like that. And very soon there's going to be an intel based imac that i probably will buy and you might think well you're crazy why are you buying an intel mac now there also may be a new version of the macbook pro 16 with mini led display and of course that awesome 5600 graphics i'm very tempted to buy that now and just upgrade to that but i might wait till the end of the year there may be a new version of this macbook pro 16 with temp generation cpus and of course that 5600 and i probably will buy that so why why would I buy an Intel system now? Now, first of all, I want to go through the pros and cons of both, right? If we're talking about the ARM-based Mac, if you're someone that buys something and something new comes out and you go, you're just going to kill yourself. You're like, oh, why did I buy that? Should have waited. And a lot of people had that experience with the 2018 Mac, the one where the Vega 20 came out like three months later and people were just cursing like, no. You know, I wouldn't have bought this thing if I knew, yeah. I think there's a long list of things that are going to be going into ARM Macs that you need to know about. And I think maybe if you're going to get a 13, 14 inch Mac or whatever, maybe it is the best solution to wait. Now, the first thing is Apple will be saving a heap of money just going to their own silicon over, you know, using Intel. We're talking hundreds of dollars. Will Apple release a really aggressively priced MacBook with, you know, a few things trimmed here and there, you know, not quite the display that you're going to get in the MacBook Pro 13 or whatever, but just try and get it in there at an $800 price point. They can do that and probably still make more profit because Apple have this sort of built-in profit model where, you know, every product has to have the certain amount of profit and that's why Macs are so expensive because they will not, you know, reduce the price to compete with Windows laptops. I mean, they just won't do that. And now that they're using their own silicon, you might think, well, they can definitely drop the prices. But rather than drop the prices, I think Apple are going to do something even better than that, just make better Macs. And I expect, you know, ARM-based Macs to have Face ID. Face ID is probably going to be built in for sure, 100%. Um, you can sort of nail that on. I don't know if it'll be in the first generation or the second generation, but it would definitely have Face ID in some form. I reckon there's going to be LTE. There's going to be built-in SIMs or eSIMs or, or just like the iPad Pro, you'll have an LTE option. Hopefully it's standard. I think that's definitely coming to an ARM-based Mac. Touch, will they go touch? Maybe. If you look at how they're making Mac OS, you might think that, yeah, they're getting that thing ready in Big Sur. Yeah, you might think that they're getting this thing ready for touch, and yeah, maybe they are. I think that you're going to have a quiet Mac. Very quiet. Ash is going to get so excited about this. You're going to have a quiet Mac. It's going to be fanless, or even if it does have a fan, I can't imagine it'll be very loud at all because of the low, you know, the performance per watt, the low power of the silicon on the chip with these ARM processors. Now, we already talked about touch, but what about a 120 hertz display? Well, I think that's definitely on the cards because if you think now that they're going to ARM silicon or Apple silicon, 120 hertz, it's going to suck battery. But with all the battery savings you're going to get going to ARM, maybe they can put it in there now. Imagine that, 120 hertz, P3 display, you know, 500 nits. It's just going to be amazing. It actually might even be brighter than that. It might be as bright as the iPad. So you can imagine, it's just going to be an awesome new display that you're going to be putting in these new ARM-based Macs. Battery life, we, you know, we don't know about battery life. You know, think about it. MacBook Air has better battery life than, say, the iPad. They just may make things thinner and lighter. They may add 120 hertz displays now and, you know, LTE. So battery life may be around the same, but you're getting all these extra features. Pencil support. You got a touch Mac now? Why not have pencil support? New designs. Will it have new designs? I think now that Apple have moved to ARM, I don't think they're going to have the same designs. They're going to have all new designs. Will they go to two-in-one designs or something like that so you can use the Apple Pencil? I think things are going to get thinner. They're going to get lighter. Uh, these new designs should be good. And maybe there'll be two-in-ones or something like that. You just don't know. We don't know. 
But honestly, I'll be very disappointed if they just look like normal Macs or normal Mac notebooks as we know them now. Now, with all that said, why will I buy the new Intel iMac? Why will I get the new MacBook Pro 16 at the end of the year with mini LED? And I think it's like, well, just buy for now. If you need something now, just go for it. I wouldn't worry about it. And the thing is, with Intel-based Macs, you know what you're getting. You know what you're getting with AMD graphics. You know the performance is going to be there. You know all your apps are going to run. There's going to be no issues whatsoever. And these may be the last good Macs. And they may be sought after. Who knows? I think the biggest thing here is you'll be able to run boot camp. So you'll be able to game properly with Windows. Especially with the iMac, you know, dual built-in desktop. It will be amazing with the new iMac with, you know, 10th generation CPUs and 5,700 graphics. It's just going to be like an amazing desktop. And I probably will get the last Intel versions of all these because I know I'm going to be covered for at least three years. The iMac will probably stay there forever. When we're talking about a desktop and a lot of those features I just rattled on about, they probably won't come to IMAX. You know, stuff like LTE and who gives a toss about battery life, it's not even an issue, right? But I'm probably gonna put my money where my mouth is, and I'm probably gonna go with the last Intel, and I'm gonna be covered for years, I know it's gonna work. I do think if you're gonna get a 13 inch laptop, maybe wait for the ARM one, definitely, because you know, you're gonna get better graphics already. And it's just going to be a beast. And you'll probably have all those things that I talked about before. You know, all those advanced things. And you get a MacBook Pro now and you'll be like, ah, oh, I wanted that face ID. I wanted that 120 hertz display. I wanted that LTE support. So definitely stay away from, you know, the MacBook Pro now. But if you're talking MacBook Pro 16 or even, you know, an iMac, Intel based, yeah, I'll probably go that for sure. 100% I'll go with that. Anyway, that's my little ramble from the beach. I'm going to stick with Intel for now. I'm going to wait to see what happens. You know, will all the developers jump on board? I'm really excited for this because it's something new. I do. I definitely think I'll be getting a new MacBook Pro. You know, 13 inch with ARM. I think it's going to be a good device. But anyway, catch you in the next one. Sally, ho.